On today's show, we deep dive into getting tattoos from industrial robot arms, biking across Britain using virtual reality, and of course, the brand new HoloLens demo. And we take a look at a Kickstarter that burns notifications into your toast? That sounds like really weird toast. Also, you're not Jeff. I'm not. Hello. It's Tomorrow Daily. <laughs> Greetings, citizens of the internet. Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best geek talk show in the known universe. I'm Ashley Escava, and this, my friends, is Tr Christian Spicer. Hello. How is everyone? How is the internet? Uh, you may know Christian from other efforts such as DLC, a podcast in which you, you and an absolute monster of a human being named Jeff Kanata. Yeah, I'm trying to slowly just like ease him out of everything he does, and just I would do that show with myself, like on both sides. But you know, Jeff is so good at what he does. He I know he is, he is really good at he what really he does. Um, Jeff is in Chicago. For those of you who were wondering where the heck is Jeff, um, so we decided maybe we would just steal one of Jeff's co-hosts and and do the show, do the long show. So without further ado, uh, let's hit some headlines. <laughs> Now, you weren't here this week, so I get to ask you all the fun questions. <laughs> uh, would you, in fact, get a tattoo from an industrial robot arm? Part of me says yes, because it lowers the chance of that human error where you get like, I want to get California on my arm, and you get like cauliflower or something, because sure. the guy is just... Misspelled. Right. Out of his mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But also, at the same time, there seems something very impersonal about you sit down and this robot comes over and is just like, just FOREVER! <laughs> And you're branded. Love mom. Like right. you have your mom tattoo, a robot gave that to you, that does seem a little weird. But it seems kind of cool to picture you could go to like a pharmacy or a convenience store instead of getting your blood pressure read. You can just put your arm in, you know, you pick what you want on pick the Pick your flash that, art. Yeah. Pick your flash art. <laughs> yeah. Get your nice, a nice sexy lady on your forearm. Mm -hmm, get mm -hmm. it, it would take a really long time. You'd be there forever because but, this robot arm takes a while. Oh well, yeah, but I mean like the thought of having it done from an industrial robot trumps everything else That's true. about having a tattoo. That's true. So uh, for those of you who didn't see the episode earlier this week, uh, well, let's talk about this. This is awesome. So Pier 9 is doing a residency in San Francisco, and Appropriate Audiences is a, a team uh, consisting of two French designers who created, uh, they kind of remade an industrial robot that is used for manufacturing into a tattoo artist. I'd, I hesitate to say artist because really it just it's like a tattooing machine. Um, but there they are doing sort of some demo work on the uh, on the actual on sort of a fake human skin type thing. That's uh, the arm working in manufacturing, which is what you would expect it to be doing. Uh, it is terrifying to think about the fact that um, if somebody flinches, like they have the guy duct taped down, <laughs> they have him duct taped down. I mean, if if he moves barely, one of the things about industrial robots that makes them so dangerous is they don't stop. No, oh, yeah. Like, they just keep doing their job over and over and over again. So if you flinch, that's not a good place. I just feel bad, like, for this poor robot. I envision this robot, you know, has to go home and tell his wife robot, like, I'm working two jobs, babe. First, I'm building cars <laughs> at the factory. But he's getting paid for two jobs. He's getting paid for two <laughs> jobs. I think it's all right. Maybe, paid I mean, for two, two gigs. I don't know what uh, Robo Tattoo pays, but maybe, maybe, maybe there'll be a reality TV show, Robo Inc. You can yeah, pitch Robo that. Inc. We can make it happen. I would watch that show. <laughs> People designing robots that had to give tattoos, like they had to program the robots, and then both the robot and the programmer were eliminated. That sounds amazing. I would watch that. Um, so we asked our viewers to use the hashtag #HeyTD to tell us what kind of tattoo you would get if you. <laughs> Were to get one from a robot. None, none, none. Everybody none. said, no, no tattoo. No, a no, uh, couple of people wrote back. This is great. So Richard wrote in and said, I would get a Bender tattoo. Okay. They're going meta. Yeah, I like that. Oddly enough, Luis also wrote in and said, the perfect tattoo is Bender from Futurama. Yeah. So you guys are on the same page here. Uh, and then Corey said, I've always wanted a tattoo of a circuit board on my hand, either looking like it's a bone or under my skin. Okay. So sort of those biomechanical tattoos that you see? Yeah. Maybe if you get that from a robot, it has a little bit more meaning it's to like, it. It's like, it's the robot's heart on your hand or something. Yeah, right? it's, it's like, kinda... it's it's hard work. It's like showing out, like, it's kind of an interesting, it would hurt really bad, though. Yeah, Getting no, a hand tattoo seems like a very painful experience. No one said, like, the Mona Lisa. No one wants some, like, some great works of art from this thing. They no, all just you... want, like, metal stuff, metal stuff, metal stuff. Although, to be fair, let's talk about this. Portrait art and tattoos <laughs> can sometimes be very bad. Yeah. And so maybe a robot doing it, you'd actually get a more accurate representation of the family member you were hoping to immortalize in your skin. Here's my infant child robot. 
please make it a tattoo. And they did. And the robot's like, child. Yeah. <laughs> the robot's like, I'm going to need to just, just take your child forever. Uh, it's terrifying. No. It's terrifying. Yeah. Do you have like your top three tattoos that you would have robo tattooed on you? I think if I were to get a robot to, I would obviously get Genghis tattooed on uh, me. I duh. mean, just a nice line art version of Genghis. Like, okay. I think that's, that's definitely a must. Um, I, I think some line art would be really cool. So, could, so similar to the spiral that it did, but yeah. I would love, I think the number one for me would be an old timey robot. Cause okay. then it's like sort of the juxtaposition of a new futuristic robot giving me a tattoo of some of the first toy robots. I think I would just get something from Terminator 2. So okay. it's just a scene of the robots taking over the world on my arm from a robot. And every time Perfect. I'd look at it, I'd be like, we're getting closer. It's a reminder, yeah. a constant yeah. a vigilance. <laughs> Is key. <laughs> right. That always reminds you to be yeah, keep your eyes open, humanity. Yeah. Keep your yeah. eyes open. Uh, okay, so then our second story is this guy decided he wanted to bike across Britain, mm -hmm. but he did not actually want to leave his house, cool. as one does. Right. As one does. We don't like to leave our houses either. So he, in fact, uh, took Google Street View and a Samsung Gear VR, got on his exercise bike, and he is currently biking across the UK. Uh, using Google Street View, which looks very glitchy at times. Yeah. Very surrealist. <laughs> this is like going through, uh, you know, this is going through a surrealist painting. Yeah. Very much. I'm waiting to see melting clocks is, is all. I think that when he gets off the bike after a certain time, like I know Jeff, you know, usual person here, is very pro VR. Yes, I've very. taken the plunge into VR. I own an Oculus and I was playing some Dirt Rally VR and it is the most nauseous I got. Really? Where, you know, you're in the car and you're diving around going over cliffs and when you and fall. it's too much. It was too much. Like, I didn't throw up, but I all but didn't But you were up. just like, uh, and now are you prone to that? Not really. So, okay. So this is a new, kind of a newish experience for you. Yeah. I'm similar in that I felt that way when I played a little bit of Resident Evil and Farpoint at, at okay. E3. And I'm not, I don't get motion sickness. Yeah. But to feel that, I was like, oh, I don't like this. Right. I don't like this at all. Because your head is like, hey, dude, we're going over a hill. And your your, your butt's like, no, it's we're like, not. No. I'm sitting in this no. chair perfectly comfortable. And we're you're sitting like, down. No, here I go. So I don't know, like, this guy showing the, when we were showing the, the B-roll footage of him, like, I mean, he's there, like. He's going you know, for it. Doing this thing. Biking. But at the same time. But do you think the motion helps? Like, the, his legs moving? He actually feels like he's biking like that, as opposed to just getting a ride. I and sitting stationary? I think maybe, but at the same time, he, he's not going up a hill. He's not feeling the bumps. That's I don't know true. if it would be even more of a disconnect. Where this is a new world for our brains. Yes. Because you're like, I'm here. No, no, you're not. That's a good way to describe it. A new world for your brain. Because <laughs> it is. It's it's very strange to sort of have these sensations of, like, in Farpoint, I have the, the gun and I'm like, and I'm moving, right. but my legs aren't moving. And right. I, it's it doesn't feel right. There's a disconnect there that's just sort of like, wait, but my legs should be moving. So I was standing in place walking <laughs> because it just felt better. Yeah. But I, like, so we asked our viewers what you guys would want to do for exercise if you could use VR to exercise. Oh, no, okay. So Derek wrote and said, <laughs> Me winning the Price is Right Showcase Showdown. That's that's what he wants to do. Or him winning Powerball, breaking a sweat already. Okay. He's just very excited. I would love to live that moment in sure. virtual reality. But here's the thing. You also then have to live with the crushing <laughs> reality of the fact that you have not actually won anything and when you take that headset off. Yeah, so. I, I can't imagine the moment where you're like, I won, I won, and then you take it off and you're just like, oh no. In a desolate, This is still my studio apartment. apartment. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. like, I'm still living in this uh, no bedroom apartment right. with half a bathroom. <laughs> and I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's when you decide I am never leaving virtual right. reality. Like, I'm just going to stay here forever. Uh, and then of course, Jay wrote in and said, how about using VR as a virtual baseball pitching machine? Athletes can visualize the speed and break of major league pitches to train. Okay. Liked that. Yeah, like I like that. one was totally just ridiculous, uh, pure fantasy. There's the other nothing one wrong is... with wanting to win the showcase showdown. <laughs> There's nothing. The other one is like, I want to get better at my job, and here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to yeah. go. And the other guy's like, the price is right, though. But but guys, the price is right. And we'd, we'd get Drew out of there, and <laughs> that's what I want. I want to host the Price is Right okay. in virtual reality. That's sure. my that. Listen, parent company CBS. <laughs> This is a gold mine waiting to happen. I could host in virtual reality if I could just download a little experience that allows me to like host Price is Right. I think it'd be great. Would you need? Would you want to actually hold the wand or just pretend? A hundred percent. I would need a, a controller that yeah. was the sh skinny long microphone yeah. that you yeah. have in Price is Right. Of course. I, uh, it's it's a done deal. So the technology was built for. Little known fact: right. if you look at the very first VR unit, it was built 
to allow people to host game shows. Bob Barkerson. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bob Barkerson, <laughs> totally. Uh, and then our last story is the HoloLens demo that just came out yesterday. This is really cool. Legendary Pictures teamed up with Microsoft. Looks like they're they're planning on doing some pretty amazing stuff with HoloLens. So this is some of the augmented reality. That's the building we work in, by the way. That's the very same building. Um, that, that building is where Tomorrow Daily shot. So here is some, uh, oh, Sam. Uh, so here's some Warcraft AR. So this was a, a booth that that you could get into and they would do this augmented reality sort of like hologram where you could interact with Orgrim and, and all this stuff. And then uh, they're also doing things with HoloLens where you're able to sort of create these augmented reality scenes. Um, so a, a little bit later in this video, they have Pacific Rim. They have the, they place the robot farther down the hall and like shrink it a little bit to give it some perspective. And then it walks closer to them and it's like really cool. And then they want people to be able to share this on social media. So it's sort of a mixed reality sharing sort of advertainment <laughs> type thing. But this does seem like a thing people would be super into. Have you HoloLensed? I have. I did the Halo experience at E3. And it's not this. It's, it is not that. It's really not this. That's like ho having a VR headset and having HoloLens. I mean, it is the future. Like we will get there and it'll be amazing. It'll happen. But like that video that we just saw where the guy has his lens on and the orc still over here doing something, no. that orc's not there. Nope. Like, and you, and you, you turn, and then he pops up and he's there. It's not like yeah. he's there, or you look across the hall at Susan down in accounting, and she's got an orc in her, it's like. Just waiting, yeah. yeah. It doesn't work that way. But it's it, a, that very small field of view is so, it's a big hurdle. Yeah, but it's, it's cool to see cool IPs diving into this, because I think that's, you, you want content for this, you want fun stuff that's other than just like, Accounting Practical, spreadsheet. Accounting right, yeah, of course. Spreadsheet. Of course. Practical things are great, yeah. but really the thing that picks up public interest is obviously things that are fun. Yes. Um, and I think this is a really great way to do it. Uh, in terms of IPs that I would like to see using this sure. kind of stuff, I mean, obviously in gaming, it's a, it's a great opportunity, but I love the idea of like legendary uh, DC, Marvel. Like, I mean, these are really great opportunities for them to kind of create these mixed re I think mixed reality is do you think it'll be more appealing for the everyday person cuz I I stand by AR is like for everyone and VR is for like gaming and these sort of very specific like entertainment filmmaking experiences. Sure. My hope is that you know those cheesy sunglasses the transition lenses you're mm -hmm. not wearing transition lenses are you? No, I'm okay, not. great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but my hope is that we get an AR VR hybrid. So the thing that oh. you have is AR an AR on the streets and a VR in the sheets, that's not a thing. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to quote you on that. That's 100% going to be the tagline for today's show. A AR in the streets, VR in the sheets, guys. Mm, mm, mm. But you're walking around and you have those AR experiences where you're doing things, but then if you want to go full immersive, you know, somehow it can, can black out and you can have that full VR experience. That's interesting. Maybe it's an add-on that sort of is uh, like really cheesy, like clip-on gla yeah. sunglasses. Yeah. Where so you clip them on and then it blocks out all of your, you know, peripheral vision and then you can have this sort of virtual reality experience. Now, I'm curious as to what you think Magic Leap is. What do I think do Magic you think Leap it's, is? Do you think it's a face visor like we've been sort of maybe seeing in the patents and... I don't know. I mean, it, it has. I think it's. They're saying it's full field of view. Right. That's what you're seeing. What they show on their YouTube channel, they they say it is. That's what you're looking at. Right. But we just saw what Legendary was showing on their Hololens. But channel. Magic Leap has that little <laughs> thing, that disclaimer that says this was shot directly I know. out of. I know. I I think it has to be. It's like a spacesuit helmet, right? I mean, it has, it to, has be, to be or it's something contact, but that's mind blowing. Crazy. Like I, I'm right. dying to know. Yeah, I, we, it's insane. We have to know. Um, that is it for our headlines. So uh, no guests this week because we're spinning well, down the show. I mean, thanks, but I mean, you're you are a co-host. Okay. You're vaunted. This I'm is in a it. yeah. You're you're yeah. in it. Um, <laughs> so we're so we're gonna skip our our 15 minute guest segment and we're gonna go right into back at Hackett where we will talk about some very interesting posts. Uh, so stick around. It's tomorrow daily. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, everybody. Uh, once again, joining me, Christian Spicer of DLC, a great video gaming podcast. Oh, thank you. We have fun with it. It's really delightful. Thank you. Um, you guys are you guys are really fun to listen to. Uh, do you do you back stuff on so on crowdfund? I've backed. Uh, I can count the things I've backed. The most recent thing was a video game called On a Roll, which is a rollerblading video game. As a former 
professional rollerblader here. Of course. I don't want to overshadow everything else that's happening on this show. Sure, 100%. With that. No, no, I'm so <laughs> impressed. I feel like I'm learning things about you I never thought possible. Yeah, it's pretty big, pretty big. But I'm not one to jump into the, oh my, God, I need, this needs to, I'm kind of of the mindset of when it, I, it's a thing I can hold, I will then go, is this worth my money? Do I, do I want to buy this? Okay. What about right. you? Have you? I back stuff all the time on nice. Kickstarter. I love crowdfunding. <laughs> um, so, and, and we do a segment called, appropriately, Back It or Hack It. Yep. Today's Back It or Hack It is uh, borderline ridiculous. <laughs> and I will take full responsibility for that because I saw it and I thought to myself, we have to talk about this on Tomorrow Daily. Uh, this is the Toasteroid. Yeah. Not to be confused with a hemorrhoid. No. Um, the Toasteroid allows you to create messages and notifications on your toast. <laughs> so we've seen uh, Star Trek, uh, Star Wars toasters that make Darth Vader heads and yep. things like that. Not this toaster, my friends. This toaster will send images. You can make little pixel images. You can do. Uh, you can get notifications about the weather. So let's say you're enjoying. A delightful cup of coffee and you're like I wonder what the weather's like today and you get your toast and it's right there right there for you you don't have to check your cell phone your toast will tell you uh, you can also get you can send toast messages you can customize print see they have all these uh, great you can draw things I chose you do you have kids I do I have two young girls um, Would they like this is this a thing like that you would pick up for them no, but I think they'd like it. Like they they would enjoy it. The custom imaging, I think, is the is the selling factor. Like sure. the smart toast, the weather. I think all that would pop out with as a smart toast is you wasted your money on this. Like it just every morning, and you're like, you're right, toaster, I did. You know, I'd love to amortize out how many loaves of bread it would take to pay for this. Like <laughs> in terms of you know, and this like every time you have toast comes out, it has a dollar amount right, on it. Right. It's just like you have to eat so many slices of bread with messages on it to make up for the cost of this toaster. Which, by the way, yeah, uh, a full size toasteroid, not that expensive. I thought it was gonna be like two hundred bucks. Sure, because that's usually kind of gadget threshold, right. like two hundred dollars. Seventy nine dollars was the early bird. But what is the price of a toaster? Uh, probably like twenty bucks. I was gonna say like it's the thing that you have, but it's not it's just so, the thing you have. But it's like, not so much more. Sure. Then so like a coffee maker, you get a right. cheap one for twenty dollars, sure. or you could buy like a Keurig for two hundred dollars. Right. So this is sort of somewhere in between, which feels like okay, well, it's not so expensive that I'm entirely like that is an outrage. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Like no one's gonna pay. I know you just talked for a long time, but all I heard you say is I backed this. Like that's all I heard I you did say. It. I did. <laughs> I swear I've not backed this, this yet. <laughs> You're like, I mean no no no. And listen listen to these reasons, you guys. I mean, really at a tote for twenty for seventy nine dollars. I'm selling like, it right now. Yeah. I actually work for Toasteroid. <laughs> I I just take it a new position so that's why we're spinning down the show. Because <laughs> Toasteroid, like, Toasteroid <laughs> offered me an insane package. It's great. Uh yeah, so this is is app controlled like sure. you use an app you can draw all the stuff like yeah there it is and uh you you do all of this and it's got a weather forecaster a private messenger and a doodle pad and it makes great toast apparently i like the way it looks i like futuristic looking appliances but look at it now like the part that you doodle where the image is that just untoasted toast i think so So like the bigger your image is the less the toasted. less it's toasted <laughs> so maybe if you really like very lightly toasted bread okay. you, you draw your little image but if not you just let, you, it, you let, let it go, go. Yeah. let it go to town <laughs> uh but yeah like 85 they have a apparently they have a mini version it's toast two slices that's a toasteroid mini that's like 65 bucks okay sure and then they have the full-sized one uh which can print images on both slices so i should uh for full disclosure i should say that um i do own a captain america waffle maker Okay. But I can't change that image. I mean, it's always a Captain America shield. But wouldn't you like to change it sometimes? Like, wouldn't it be cool if Marvel made a smart waffle maker that you could choose uh, maybe, a, maybe a Hulk or a Loki or a Captain America or, or Iron Man? I mean, I'm, I'm laughing, but would I buy that? You would buy it. Yeah, that. I would buy it. 100%. <laughs> you would buy it. You've already backed that in your mind. I mean, I think I've backed that. On imaginary Kickstarter. Full of copyright, copyright infringement toast is what I've made with this. It's of just course. like Batman, Superman, whatever it is. That seems like it would be really fun Tumblr. Okay, copyright just, infringement can I just get toast. my wallet out real quick? Yeah, can we just let's, do this? we'll, we we'll do it. It's great. Uh, you can get your reminders. If you want to be reminded of something, you need toast to remind you to do it. I mean, that's really important. <laughs> Set up a saving account. You're like, oh, Toasteroid. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Toasteroid. Um, I will say, though, it's uh, even though it's not so expensive, right. uh, 
I don't know if they're going to reach their goal. So you may not ever get a toast to it, even if you do back it, because they currently have 38 days left in the campaign. They want $150,000, which is okay. a lot of money, okay. especially for a lower cost thing. And uh, they have currently 55000 So they're a third of the way there. They have 38 days left, so they might get there. I mean, maybe with this there. push. You guys, my daughters need this. Toasteroid. <laughs> They're, they already want it for the holiday. And the delivery, I guess, is next year. It's in a year. Okay. So you get it in about a year. Okay. Your futuristic toaster, just in time for the future of next year. When I'll have my robot tattoo that will say, enjoy your toast. Mm -hmm. Then my toast will come up and it'll say, say enjoy your tattoo. Oh! That's how it's done. That's how it's done. That's how the future is going to work, guys. It's just going to constantly remind you to enjoy whatever other thing that you have. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Hold on. I'm in. Right. <laughs> it's, and, then you're, and then your visor's like, Enjoy your crazy toaster. Yeah. It's the best. Uh, so, yeah, that's Toasteroid. I, I, it's, you can use it on iOS or Android if you have a phone. I, like, I feel like I should say that because they have the image very large on their, yeah. well, on their Kickstarter website. Uh, but that's back at our hack it. So now we get to talk about the fun stuff we are obsessing over this week, which yeah. I know that you have. We, we are fans of things. So let's, let's do into it. <laughs> Since you are a guest in our Yay. in our studio, what are you into this week? Well, people that know me from other things that I do, I am a pop punk kid. Okay. I was born and raised on pop punk. Like as a guy in my thirties now, I get that it's ridiculous music. But it's great. But I still love it. Like if a song starts with "Let's Go," I'm so on board. So you're you're a Ramones guy. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, even that's almost too punk. It's almost too punk. Okay. I'm, all right. You all know, right. Blink 182, Newfound Glory. Like I gotcha. My okay. girlfriend, my sophomore year in high school, left me. But my dad's a doctor. My mom's an attorney. Life's so hard. Yeah. You know, okay. Like that. Got it. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. Uh, the oppression <laughs> of the the privileged middle class yeah. uh, kid in high school. Got right. It. Got right. It. Got that got Orange it. County kid that has like the worst life ever, but makes Super the best impressed. music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It's not. They don't have a new album out. It's nothing new. But I have fallen into the well of the band called the Front Bottoms, and I do not want to get out of this well. All right. Calling it pop punk is maybe giving it a little bit of a disservice. Like if you don't like Blink, don't write them off as that kind of music. Okay. It could also be indie or alt, but it just reminds you of high school in a way that where you're like, you know what? I am sad, but it's okay. <laughs> I am sad, but it's okay. I don't know that I want to be reminded of that. No, you do, though. You do. What about people watching who are not in high school yet? Okay, well... How will they feel? Buckle up. Get ready for high school because you're going to be sad, but that's okay. But it's okay. Is that, that's, that's the message. It's, it's wonderful, uh, upbeat, melancholy music, if that makes sense. It does. No, it does. And I does. love ska music because a lot of times it's very sarcastic and biting, yes. but it's put under a melody that is extremely cheerful. Right. I right. totally understand. I think the Front Bottoms are currently on tour in Europe, so if you're in the U.S., you're not going to be able to see them anytime soon. But I think they have they have three full links out, a couple of EPs, a couple of split EPs. Okay. And they don't have the recognition they deserve. The front bottoms, I love them so much. We're this, giving them the tomorrow daily bump. Yeah, right. Which is threes of people. After are gonna you be back so this excited. toaster. Yeah. Go listen to go the front, front bottom. Got it. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, my into it this week is very easy. It's No Man's Sky, of course. Oh, yeah. Um so we I, I'm excited to talk about No Man's Sky with you because you're a big video gamer. I wanna know what you think about it. Uh, this is sort of my mini review so far. Um, I don't feel comfortable <laughs> yeah, actually reviewing never, it. Never, never. You'll never feel comfortable <laughs> reviewing No Man's Sky. Uh, so I played it for a few days, and I've had I've put in tons of hours. I've walked fifty thousand units. Like I've I've learned almost I think sixty words in uh, the Viking language. I know all about their history, guys. They had a sixty-six year long war. It was very hard. Uh, they hate the Sentinels. So okay, I am a space archaeologist. That's basically if this. If you want to be a space archaeologist or zoologist, this is the game for you. And I, I mentioned on Twitter, this is an MMO where you never run into anybody, yes. and which makes it the most perfect game for me. Okay. Because I love the idea of, I love knowing other people are out there. It's awesome. But I don't ever want to meet them. I don't care. I want to just play my game, but I like knowing that there are other places where people are doing similar things as me. Okay. It's pretty fun. So it's just the, the act of collecting, exploring, finding. Yeah. Because like you're an archaeologist slash zoologist, but at the same time, kind of like there are a million uh, unlimited planets, unlimited animals, unlimited species. Yeah. But it's never you never land on a on a world that is overrun by something. Right. right exactly. It's always like a little here, a little here. It's very safe. Right. In but a way there are that... some worlds that are super barren. Yeah. 
uh, that I've run into. And then there are some that are extremely lush, which is impressive. The, the algorithms that they're running that are making all of this is really, I mean, it's really something for, yeah. the, for the game studio that previously brought you Joe Danger <laughs> <Right>. on iOS. <laughs> like, this is a really huge accomplishment. Um, yeah, this is, a, a, it's such a fascinating game, and I think it's not for everybody. It's certainly not for everybody. If you're a person who needs uh, goals, if you like linear games, if you, it's very, Logan, producer Logan and I were talking about this, it's very similar to a Minecraft. Okay. So where it's like, it's a thing where it can be anything you want it to be. Um, but in Minecraft, you like you can have a goal of like building a specific thing. Right. You could say, I want to build this thing. Or you could just say, well, you know what? I'm just going to like mine stuff and check things out. And maybe I'll build some. Maybe I won't. I don't right. care. It's the same type of thing. Like You have to be willing to sort of not set goals for yourself, but know what you want out of the game, I guess. It's like a good way to put it. So I mean, I think the game wants to know, what are your biggest strengths and weaknesses? And why do you think you're right for this job? Is that yeah. what the game's doing it's to you? Just interview. kind of interview 101. I love that it's almost <laughs> philosophical in the sense of you are always wondering, like, why am I here? <laughs> why am I in this? What am I doing? Like, right. and and often I feel like that in real life, <laughs> and so it feels very. Uh, it, it's it's like autobiographical for me. And sometimes I'm walking around and I'm like, I don't even know what I'm seeing. And often I feel like that in real life. So I think it's really it's cool to be able to sort of. Um, Upgrade your ship. Like I love. I found a crash ship. Okay. And I very stupidly made a grave error. I did not read the. Re, always read the warnings, guys. In <laughs> games, I did not read the warning when I had accepted the ship. I'm like, oh, this is a much better ship. It has tons more storage space. And I accepted it without reading the tip, which said, May, warning, be sure to transfer all your items over into oh, the no. ship before you actually take it. And yeah. all of my inventory in the other ship was gone. Well, that just means you have even more storage now, I know. Now right? I'm like, well, uh, I guess I'm just going to start. But all my stuff was broken. So okay. like my pulse drives were broken. Everything was broken. So I had to walk around for hours, <laughs> like recollecting resources enough to make to craft stuff to be able to fix my ship and it was um it was it was painful however i really enjoyed it because it felt so immersive in that way like right. i was like now there's no shortcuts here there's no there's <laughs> there's no shortcuts there's none of this nonsense of like oh you can quick travel no you need to put the time in right. i really enjoyed that yeah i lo i love it I i'm want, absolutely loving it i want this game mixed with destiny Oh, yeah. So you're doing yeah, okay. all of this stuff, and it's still kind of there are other people in there's your world, linear, but you're yeah, not. There's some linear, yeah. There's some linearness to it. There's some, maybe a raid or some sort right. of goal that you could group up with other people and do. So come on, four people that made this game, make it even bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Find a way to make 18 quintillion planets an actual networked persistent universe yeah. at all times. Come on. Google will need to sponsor the server space for that, and Amazon. They'll have to co-sponsor the server. Right. <laughs> power needed to make it an actual, real, persistent universe as opposed to just a procedurally generated we'll one. We'll pull power from the toaster sure. and give it to you guys to make this game happen. 10,000 toasteroids, <laughs> I think, could totally make this work. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm into. And uh, sorry for the little like mini rant about it, because I'm really enjoying it and I love it. But it, it certainly is not for everybody. Yeah. And uh, there are some things that are annoying about the game. Like, I, I, I have fallen through the world. Um, I got stuck in a gold node, and then I, it just dropped me uh, right into the yeah. center of the planet I was in, and I had to restart. You found the center? I found the center of the oh, planet, planet. Okay. not the universe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm really enjoying it. So if, if exploration, if you want to be space Indiana Jones without any of the action, well, <laughs> very little of the action because yeah. you can shoot stuff, um, this is the game for you. This is 100% the game for you. Uh, let's wrap up the show with our phone talker for the day. Great. You're so collected, so calm compared uh, to Jeff. Really? Jeff is always ex so exuberant about everything, and it's like there's definitely like I like this chemistry too. It's different, but I like it. Uh oh. Jeff's probably not. Uh oh, watching this. Jeff, where are you at? He's watching it right now. I'm where, sorry, Jeff. Don't cry. Yeah, it's okay. And he's like very passionate about. Very passionate now this. about. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. This is gonna be. He might get jealous. Yeah. He might get jealous. That's okay. Um. So let's let's take a look at Clayton's picture. Clayton took. We have been asking our viewers to send in the best picture they've ever taken on a phone. Yeah. And Clayton sent this in, which is a pretty good candidate. Yeah. Uh, he took this with a Nokia Lumia 930, and he wrote in and said, Hey, Ashley and Jeff, so we'll just amend that to Christian. Oh, Clayton. <laughs> 
I thought this photo was great when I took it on my Nokia Lumia 930 a couple months ago at Strawberry Fields in St. Mary, Jamaica. Ooh. My friends and I took a nice field trip to relax that day, and the scene was breathtaking. You definitely have my permission to use the photo. Cheers, Clayton from the tropics. I wish I could sign off my emails with from the tropics. From the tropics. Maybe yeah. I will anyway. Just why not? Sent from the tropics. Uh, this is a gorgeous shot. I mean, everything about it I love. The composition is fantastic. I love this like small gazebo type thing sitting here next to the water. It's amazing. This is a great picture. Yeah, I could see that as a shot on an iPhone 6. And yeah, then they put like asterisks, on... not really. Not like, really. It's actually a little But like, yeah. it's a great picture. But it's really it's good and we picture. liked it. Right. Yeah, yeah. We, we, Apple, we, we really liked it, you guys. <laughs> uh, we sent somebody to go take this exact, exact shot right. yeah. with an iPhone yeah. because this picture is so good. Can I take uh, a picture of that picture with my iPhone and submit it? Yeah, I think I still might get it because that's a good picture. It's a really good. It's good enough to maybe you could actually do it that way. Do a pick Layered and pick. a PIP. A yeah, you do pick and pick. <laughs> um, that was awesome, Clayton. Thank you so much for sending that in. And if you guys want to send in your photography, you can email us tomorrow at cnet.com. Uh, you got to do four things though. Okay. These are the important things. Uh, one, you have to tell us how to pronounce your name. Mm -hmm. Clayton did great job. Two, you have to tell us what device you took your picture with because I like to know and I'm nosy. And I don't want to look at your exit data. <laughs> Three, uh, you have to give us permission to use a picture on the show because our legal department makes us say that. And four, of course, we love for you to tell us a story about your picture because if it's the best picture you've ever taken, there has to be a story to go along with it. So there you have it. Uh, that is it for the show. You're all, you're all done. We did it. Was it so easy? Did I you mean, have a nice time? Like the, the guy behind me that kept poking me when it was my turn to park. Oh, I can't even. I'm, he's to, talk, park? to park. To park. Are talk. you a car? I'm done. You said the show was over. You oh said the show was over. I'm officially done. Breaking news, everybody. <laughs> Christian Spicer is actually a robot car. I can hold it together. And he's talk a robot car person. For increments of 10 to 15 minutes. After that, it all it's goes over. to yeah. It all goes to park. You guys. It all goes to park. Mind shifts into park. I see. Uh, well, I'm glad that you had a good time. Thanks for having me. Um, and we'll have to have you back to uh, to do something when we do our new stuff. I want to do this show again two weeks from now. You can, but it will never air because the show will be ending next Thursday. Okay. So, but but you totally could if you wanted to come in. I'm sure the set will still be up. We won't Great. have torn it down yet. Great. More than welcome to. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Christian Spicer. Where can people find you on the internet? Twitter is probably the easiest way. It is at Spicer S P I C E R, and then uh, you have links. I have links. You have links. We all have links um, to everything else: YouTube, Twitch, stuff like that. At ChristianSpicer.com. And uh, where can people listen to DLC? Oh yeah, it's uh, 5x5.tv slash DLC, video game podcast. Jeff Kanata and I do every Monday, and it is a clean show. So feel free to listen with your kids. Get them into gaming. Yeah, if they're not already. Yeah. Just in case. Uh, that is it for the show, everybody. We'll be back next week with a brand new docket of Science Fact Meeting Science Fiction, our final week of Tomorrow Daily. We're in the home stretch. Uh, but until then, be good humans. Bye, guys. Oh.